What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the HTC One, the new flagship phone from HTC here, the challenge Samsung and Apple for the marketplace. So HTC has done some really interesting things with these HTC One in order to make it a standout product. And that really starts with both the design, the display quality, audio quality, as well as the camera. Starting off with the uh, phone design, we have this beautiful zero gap, all aluminum construction. We'll take a close look at that, of course. We also have this emphasis on the stereo speakers. So audio is a big story here. So we have a built-in amplifier for excellent audio quality, as well as Beats Audio Processing for enhanced audio quality, uh, which works both over the stereo speakers as well as the headphone jack. Uh, we also have uh, dual microphones with dual membranes uh, for enhanced audio quality when recording video, as well as enhanced uh, noise cancellation, as well as dynamic volume adjustment uh, when you're on the phone call. It automatically reads the ambient noise and adjusts the phone quality or the audio quality to compensate. Now, we also have this ultra pixel camera, which is somewhat of a controversial topic here because it basically comes down to a 4 megapixel sensor sensor, but an ultra pixel is three times the size of a standard pixel on a 8 megapixel or 13 megapixel sensor, which gives you better low light performance and better color accuracy. So you get basically get better real world photos than you do with a phone with a uh, higher spec uh, resolution sensor, which has smaller pixels and can't really uh, bring in the lights like a larger uh, sensor. So in terms of specs, we have a really impressive phone here. So again, 1.7 gigahertz quad core processor. This is a Snapdragon 600 processor. We also have two gigs of RAM GDR2. We have 32 gigs of storage. This is also available with 64 gigs. Keep in mind, you only get two capacities, 32 or 64 gig, and no SD card slot. So pick your size when you buy your phone. 4.7 inch, 1080p full HD screen, 468 PPI as well. And we have HTC Boom Sound, which is what they're referring to with that front firing stereo speakers. Uh, we also have that ultra pixel camera, which uh, noticeably they do not mention any specs there. It's a 4 megapixel sensor. Uh, we also have the front facing camera, 2.1 megapixels which is good for 1080p video uh, with HDR video as well. Same with the front fire or the back main camera. Uh, again, you get uh, 1080p HDR video with stabilization. Uh, of course, we also have features like DLNA, ATPS, GLONASS, NFC. So we have NFC technology in here as well as Bluetooth 4.0. So let's go ahead, crack into the phone and see what we get. Now, if you get the at t phone, you'll get this little message inside. We hope you love your new HTC One. Get a little pamphlet here up top, which is basically a quick start guide with at t branding. So it tells you a little about, about using your HTC One. And you have your HTC One here in its plastic. Now, I should mention this is available in two colors, both silver and black. Obviously, I have the silver version here. So I'm going to tip this over to get it out of its packaging. So here you can see wrapped in plastic, already beautiful phone. You see it actually has some heft to it. So we're gonna set that aside for just a minute while we take a look at the contents. So inside we have some literature. So we have our IMEI serial number information as well. Uh, we have our SIM ejection tool here. So if you look closely at that, you can see HTC, nice little SIM ejection tool. Uh, we have our HTC safety and regulatory guide. We have our limited warranty by HTC. And we have our HTC stickers. So we have two sets here. Now we have our accessories as well. So we have our wall adapter. Let's peel these open here. There is our HTC glossy wall adapter for USB charging. We also have our USB cable. So this is obviously micro USB, standard fare these days. And you have your headset. So these are not Beats or iBeats. These are HTC headphones that kind of look like, um, like a, beat, a set of Beats headphones. So you can see you got that red and black theme as well as a little remote and microphone built into the line. This is that sort of spaghetti style um, uh, cable here. So it's kind of non-tangle. So that's really popular these days. All right, so let's get back to the phone, the HTC One wrapped in plastic. So I'm just going to peel this label here, and it should slide right out. There we go. There is our HTC One in all of its aluminum glory. So we have our sticker back here, which I'm going to peel off. There we go, HTC, and you can see we do have some AT&T branding down here as well as that Beats Audio. So let's take a close look at the phone. So taking a very close look here, you can see we have this all aluminum zero gap construction. So we have a combination of aluminum and plastic. Uh, so the antenna is actually built into the aluminum, so that's why you can have this full aluminum unibody without interfering with radio transparency such as cellular connectivity, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, et cetera, et cetera, including NFC. So there is NFC in here as well. Uh, so you can see down here we have these uh, brakes 
along the back. You can see that nice curve, as well as that uh, polished chamfer, which is a very evocative of the iPhone. So you can see that chamfer along the edge. I love that design detail, especially looks nice on the all aluminum raw finish. Very shiny, kind of a mirror-like finish. Along the edge, you'll see one of the microphones at the bottom, as well as a micro USB charging port. You see our HTC branding, that's ultra pixel camera with autofocusing, 1080p video recording, stabilization. We have a little LED flash which is nicely recessed, so you don't have to worry about glare. Uh, again, you see a little break up here uh, near the camera. Your headphone jack. You have your sleep wake button, which is also an IR blaster for controlling your AV equipment. So it does have an app on the phone which you can use to control your AV equipment. Up top, you'll find your front facing camera, 2.1 megapixel, again, 1080p video at 30 frames per second with HDR video, just like the main camera. You'll also have an LED indicator in here as well as ambient light sensors and a proximity sensor. Along the side, you'll find your SIM tray here, which you'll use a little SIM ejection tool here in order to pop out. And that's about all. So you also find your volume rocker on the side here with that kind of a milled aluminum button. Again, very nice detail. Looks very, very nice. Very beautiful design. Along the bottom, you'll just find another speaker as well. I'm not sure if there's microphones or anything in here, but there is that microphone down here. Now along the bottom here, you'll find these off-screen controls for Android. So you have your back button and your home button, which is positioned toward the right. The HTC logo here does not act as any sort of button. So that's all you get, the home button and the back button. So that's a little different for an Android phone. and certainly different for HTC. Now along the side, you'll see we have this sort of plastic bezel. kind of creates the illusion that the glass is sort of uh, chamfered into the edge, but that's really just a piece of plastic trim. Obviously, you probably don't want a glass right up to the edge because it makes it easier to crack. But overall, I just love the design of this phone. Absolutely beautiful. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and start this up for the first time. Just by tapping and holding the lock button. So we get a little AT&T splash screen. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the user interface. I've already logged into my Google account and I've been using the phone for a bit now, so we can take a look to see what the user interface offers. Now, this is HTC Sense, uh, HTC Sense 5, so this is the latest version of Sense. And as you can see on the lock screen, we have this clock widget as well as a weather widget. So you can see the current conditions of my location, 43 degrees, and it is cloudy and quite windy right now, by the way. And you can see we get a little clock animation. We also have a new font here. This is called Roboto, so it's a cleaner overall design. Uh, so so again, this is the uh, default configuration, and this has been spiced up a little bit with AT&T. So AT&T has done a few things with the user interface, and I'll point this out when we get to them. So looking at the lock screen, you can see we have these quick launch apps. If you just want to launch any one of them, all I have to do is tap on them. So if I go back to the lock screen, there you go. You launch them, and it takes you back to those uh, specific apps. Now, if I want to unlock the phone, all I have to do is drag up on that lock icon. It takes me back to where I last left off. Now, if I press the home button, it will take me back to Blink Feed. Now, Blink Feed is basically the main home screen. It's kind of like a big widget. So, uh, so for example, you see a widget up here. This is the clock widget along with the weather widget. And down here is Blink Feed. So if you swipe down, you can see it refreshes the screen. Uh, if you look up there, it'll refresh the screen. But you also have your options up here. Now, Blink Feed is basically an aggregator of your social media content, your news content, and it's something that you can update and modify uh, right from the uh, widget. So one of the things you can do is change the topics and services. So in this case, I can toggle between things that interest me, like the Associated Press, uh, Autoblog, Technology websites like CNET, Engadget, and The Verge. You can also swipe left and right. This is a theme very popular with HTC Sense. You can swipe left and right to, to get to different categories. Uh, so, for example, if I want to go to just select a variety of categories such as technology. So, where's technology down here? So there are several categories of technology, gadgets, internet, and mobile, or science. I've selected those three. So if I go to my blank feed, you can see it pretty much serves content that's interesting to me. I've also logged into my Twitter and Facebook account, so all that information is here as well. And again, all I have to do is tap the menu icon to change it. You can also 
uh, search for items here. So, so you can see if you search here, you can type in a search query and it'll bring up things like the Boston bomb or something that's going on right now. You also have uh, the ability to post to Facebook or Twitter. So if I want to post to Facebook, I can do that. Now, in terms of Blink feed, you basically have infinite scrolling here. So you can see it actually loads it pretty well. So you see no lag in here, loads everything nice and quickly. Uh, so if we want to jump to any one of these stories, just tap on any one of them, brings you up to a full screen. As you can read through the article, you can also share it with your variety of accounts that have been signed into this uh, uh, phone. So for example, Facebook, your messaging, uh, your mail account notes, you can go to more to get to more such as your Gmail, Google, Google Plus, Bluetooth, Twitter, and you can scroll left and right to see other stories. Now you cannot turn off blink feed, but if you don't want it on your home screen, that's a simple thing to fix. So all I have to do is tap and hold onto the home screen and you have lots of options here. So you can see up here that we have control over how many home screens we have and we can change which one is our home screen. So all we have to do is add a panel if we want to so add additional panels if we, if we want to, or of course we can remove them as well just by tapping and holding on them. Oops, let's try again, tapping and hold, take it up to remove. But as you can see, when we do that, we also have the option to set as home. So if we swipe up, that will become our home page. So now if we go home, it takes us to a more familiar sort of uh, setup. So you can swipe to the left, you can see your Blink feed, and you get a classic home page where you can arrange your apps. Now in the drop down menu, you can see we have our familiar Android 4.1.2 interface. Now what you won't find here are quick setting toggles, which I kind of miss, uh, such as turning off Wi-Fi, turning off Bluetooth, changing your, scene, uh, your screen brightness, that sort of thing. But you do have this little gear icon, which will take you right to settings. And it launches pretty quickly, so you have full access to all your settings right there. Again, if you drop back down, you can see all of your notifications and you can expand them just by uh, using the two finger gesture to swipe down. Now we can also use that long press to add widgets here. So we have lots and lots of widgets. We can add AT&T Navigator, that's uh, you can AT&T software, bookmarks, Google's uh, uh, widget, uh, Play Store widget. Uh, also we have these quick setting toggles which we can add to the home screen which is nice because we don't have them in the drop downs such as this power control setting, power dashboard, uh, also, if you want to add that classic HTC clock here, so you can see that weather clock, you can do so as well. So if you're feeling a little nostalgic, all I have to do is drag it up to one of the home screens and configure it and you're good to go. Basically, they want to focus on the main Blink feed. And instead of going to your home screens and picking apps, what you can do here is go to the app drawer. So the app drawer includes um, a lot of apps from both Google, HTC, and AT&T in this case. So you can see we even have an HTT or AT&T folder. Uh, if you want to change the layout here, you can do that. All you have to do is go to grid size and the 3x4 configuration is standard, but you can select 4x5 and see a lot more. So you can see again, we have these folders right here, which contain more apps. So HTC has already done this for you. So what I think is kind of nice. So let's organize it nicely for you so you have less places to go to to get to the apps you want. Uh, so you can see apps here, for example, all of our media apps include Watch, which is basically a HTC's uh, video rental service. It's kind of an alternative service. It's something like iTunes. Uh, if we go back to media here, you can see we have Music, which is their music player, Play Music, which is Google's YouTube, Play Music, again, Google, TuneIn Radio, again, a third-party app, and FM Radio Tuner. So we have FM Radio here. You also have Google, so Chrome, uh, Gmail, Google, Google+, Plus, Talk, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Uh, and then we have AT&T. So these are some of the AT&T apps, and we're not going to go into those. We have a native email client. This is not the Gmail client. Twitter, Play Store, productivity apps. So that includes things like note-taking and tasks. So tasks is sort of a reminder app. So we click accept. You can see these are things that are already synced to my account. Productivity also includes notes. So it's kind of like a notepad app, which also does uh, audio recording. And it does sync with your calendar and that sort of thing. And it also will sync with Evernote. So you can sign in with Evernote and transfer your contents to that app. You also have your settings toggle. It'll take you right to your settings. Now you can also get the settings from the drop down menu, and I'll show you that. Uh, also, you can jump right to the Google Play Store. Uh, from the drop down up here when you're in the app drawer. So if you tap the app drawer, it takes you back to the home screen and you can swipe right to go to the uh, other home screens. Now you can add apps directly to the home screen. It's kind of a strange process here. So for example, I have this TV app here, which I also want to demonstrate. If I tap and hold that, I have to take it up to shortcut, let it bounce me back to the home screen and drop it. So there you go, that's the TV app. If I want to remove that, just tap and hold it, take it up to remove. All right, so we go back to the app drawer. Let's take a look at that TV app. Now, the TV app is basically the app that uses the IR Blaster. I've already set it up. It couldn't find my TV, but it will take you through the process of setting it up for the first time. 
Uh, so it will configure devices such as your TV, your AV receiver, and your uh, service box, like your set-top box, in my case, Uverse. So here is my remote control. Uh, so you can see, if you see this little indicator up here indicating that it is sending an IR signal to your equipment, and it works pretty well. You can also go to uh, dial pad here, and you can go to your uh, media controls for playback. Now you'll also get a TV guide which shows you everything that's broadcasting right now. So if you want to jump to any one of these shows, all you have to do is tap on it, sends the IR code to the set-top box, change it to the right channel, and you're good to go. So you can start watching your TV. Now, one of the neat things about this app is that it integrates with your notification panel. So if you navigate away from it and want to get back to your app, they actually include this little widget up here, this active widget, which allows you to control the app without actually launching the app directly. Uh, so, for example, you can mute it, you can uh, jump right back to the remote control, or you can power off your devices individually. Or, of course, you can also just tap on it. It takes you right to the app. Now in terms of the FM radio app, as you can see, it's kind of familiar territory here. You do have to connect a set of headphones to act as your antenna. Once you do, it activates the radio, turns it on for you. Now, of course, you get the, the audio either through your internal speakers or your headsets. I have to use toggle between them with that little icon up here. And you can scrub to your favorite station. So let's go back to 96.3. And you can hit favorite. You also have SoundHound up here, which will scan the music you're listening to and identify it for you. And if you go up here, you can see your local stations, or you can toggle to your favorites. So I only have one right there. So there you go. Works pretty well. Now, HTC has also included a music app with some interesting capabilities. So I've sideloaded its uh, Coldplay album. Uh, it's found the album art for me. Uh, if I hit play, it'll play the music, and you have your controls here. But you have something interesting here, which is a screensaver that can actually show you the lyrics. So you can see it highlights the lyrics as the song progresses. It actually works really well, I'm pretty impressed. Now you don't have to sign but load the lyrics, it finds it automatically using Grace Note. Now as I mentioned, we have these two off-screen Android controls reduced now to a back button and a home button. So we don't have a recent apps button, or if you're Samsung, you'd have a menu button. But in this case, if you want to go to the home screen, all you have to do is tap home. Pretty familiar, and of course back, it takes you back. Very simple. But the home button has several uses. Uh, so if you tap and hold the home button, it takes you right to Google Now. Or if you double tap takes you to the recent apps so you can launch any of your recent apps just by tapping on any one of them uh, let's go back there and you can see we can also flick them out of the way to get rid of them so that's one way to manage all of that now taking a look at our settings, we actually have some interesting features here, including the way the user interface is designed. So for example, you see that accordion effect when you get to the end of the list. So of course you have airplane mode, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, mobile data, you can toggle those on and off. You also have media output, which is referring to the media streaming box you can buy from HTC, which basically links your HTC phone to an HDTV. So this allows you to, for example, broadcast your video, photos, and photos audio. And videos on your phone. Uh, audio to your HDTV and you can control it using your uh, HTC One or your HTC phone. Now we also have, if we go to more, you have your standard settings such as usage, you can set up VPN, mobile network sharing, so you can of course have hot spotting, and NFC which you can toggle on and off. You can also personalize it. So you, for example you can change the wallpaper, you can use HTC wallpapers, you have live wallpapers, or you can use your own gallery. So here you can swipe between them, you can preview any one of them, and you can apply it so let's go back. You also have lock screen style. So if you want to change your lock screen, you have lots of options. So for example, if you want a news ticker up there, you want your gallery, uh, widgets, that sort of thing, you can pick from any one of these. So you still have a lot of customization, which HTC really likes. Uh, you can also customize your home screen, which I've demonstrated before. Again, all you have to do to activate this is uh, use that long press on the home screen. Now under Accounts in Sync, we have AT&T. Of course, that's AT&T's influence here. Facebook, Google News, Stocks, Twitter, Weather. So you can set this all up right from your settings. So it applies across your device. Your security settings, accessibility, backup, and reset. You can also transfer content, which is very interesting. Uh, so for example, you can actually transfer your, uh, your, the backup of your iPhone uh, from iTunes directly on this device, and HCC will help you with this. So that's one way of getting your iPhone content to your HTC One, so they make that pretty easy. You can also toggle on Beats Audio. You don't have a lot of controls here. You basically turn it on and off and it'll enhance the audio. So anytime you're using Beats Audio, you'll actually see a little red Beats icon appear up here. You also have control of your sound, so it's vibration and that sort of thing, your ringtones. 
apps, so you can manage your apps here. So you can uninstall them, see what's running, uh, close them in the background. Language and keyboard settings as well. Now you also have your power settings here, which is kind of interesting. HTC does have a power saver mode, so you can turn that on and off. doesn't exactly explain uh, what it's doing in the background, but it does dim the screen. I'm sure it brings down the processing power as well. You can see your usage history. You can set it to sleep mode, which will automatically turn off data connections during long periods of inactivity. So that's one way of preserving power. Yeah, so you have your date and time settings, developer options, AT&T software update, and you can learn more about the phone, such as what version of Android you're using, in this case 4.1.2. Now in terms of our HTC keyboard, we have a few interesting features here. So for example, we do have a lot of long press options. So for example, you have your keypad up here. If you tap and hold that, you can get to one. Uh, you can see number two or three, four. You can see you even have more options for certain characters such as R here. So you can scroll up here to select the one you want. But of course, if you just want a classic numeric keyboard, you can do that by toggling that. Uh, you also have a swipe like keyboard. So for example, we can do this. So it works pretty well. You also have a voice keyboard. Just tap and hold it until you get to the voice control. This is a test of the voice keyboard period. Now taking a look at the camera app, in many ways the camera app is pretty familiar territory but there are a lot of interesting features. So let's go ahead and take a look at the basics. So right now we have our camera app and you have tap to focus of course, you also have pinch to zoom and you have a little slider here, of course that's digital so that's not uh, optical in any way. You also have your settings down here so you can change your scene mode, you can change it to night. You can, you also have additional scene modes there. Uh, you have HDR mode, which will bring up the low lights and the dark, uh, bring down the highlights and bring up the low lights to even out the scene. Kind of like an HDR photo, brings it to video. Works pretty well, does tend to overexpose things. We also have the panorama mode, which is basically a coaching app that allows you to take a panorama. We've seen that before with a lot of other uh, phones, including the Nexus phones and the iPhone. We also have the timer mode, we have we can change the video quality, we can change the review duration, image adjustments, we can change the ISO, white balance, uh, uh, camera options, so if you go to camera options you'll see plenty of those as well, face detection, auto smile capture, take a photo when somebody's smiling, geotagging which I do want on, let's go ahead and turn all those on, shutter options, um, we turn the grid on and off, auto upload, so we turn that on or off, we'll save it to our upload services like Google Plus, so right now I have to select an account. I'm not going to do that right now. And of course we can also reset everything to default and we can toggle between the front and main cameras using that control up there. Uh, you can also take your photo just by snapping it and you can switch to video mode quickly like that. And you can record video and shoot a, a photo at the same time. Let's go ahead and record a video. And we're going to shoot a photo. There you go. You can see the photos uh, are recording to the uh, gallery without interrupting the recording or giving us that shutter sound effect to disturb our recording. Let's go ahead and turn that off. We can also control our flash settings up here. So we have auto on or off. Let's keep it on auto. Now we also have something called Zoe, which is a toggle. You can turn it on and off. You can see we have Zoe turned on right now. So when you take a still picture, it basically will record a video segment with that picture complete with audio. So let's go ahead and test that out. So you can see it's taking a Zoe right now with a progress indicator. Now it's best if you're doing something besides just holding still and talking. So let's go ahead and take another one. Let's try again. There you go. All right, so that is a short video segment. If we go to the gallery, you can see it right now. So in what way is that useful? Well, it's best used to liven up your gallery. So if we go to the gallery, you can see the gallery not only aggregates my personal photos, but all the photos from my social network, my newsfeed, etc. So basically everything from Blink Feed uh, appears in your gallery as well. So you can see I have my photos up here, my camera shots, um, and you can see it. You can also refresh it just by uh, dragging down. So you can see it's refreshing my feed. But if you go to my photos, you'll see some animation. It's basically part of the Zoe effect. So it's just one way of livening up your photo gallery. There's also some other uses, which I'll demonstrate. Now, naturally, every camera software has to have some filters here, so we have plenty of those to pick from, from distortion, uh, and you can change the effects using a slider here. So each one has a specific effect, like that vignette. And let's go to another one here. There you go. Lots and lots of effects. This one's actually kind of neat. So you can change the, you can go from a polarized to a sepia effect, kind of very Instagram-y. So there you go, lots of camera options. 
Now in terms of audio quality, the speakers aren't necessarily loud, but they're very clear and crisp with a nice depth and range to it. Definitely much better than any mobile device I've ever heard. So you get rich stereo sounds, almost sounds 360 degrees, especially when you're looking at it head on. So this definitely is the best one for consuming media. Alright guys, that's going to do for my quick look at the HTC One. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for my full review where I'll cover the video cameras, the photo cameras, as well as the speed and performance. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you again in the next video.